Today on Better Book Clubs, Victober tips for reading Elizabeth Gaskell's Gothic Tales. So as I'm sure many of you know by now, October is the opportunity for the Victober hashtag and a whole month-long reading of Victorian novels and short stories. I'll post below the um, introductions to what's happening this month for Victober, um, hosted by Katie and Kate and Lucy, and I hope you'll take a look at the list of things that they're suggesting, um, kind of challenges that they're putting forward for reading for this month, and um, think about participating. So the shared read for this month is Elizabeth Gaskell's Gothic Tales. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to participate, that's what I'll do. I'll, um, I'll jump in on this shared reading. And I went down to my bookshelves. Both my husband and I studied English literature in college and graduate school. And I was shocked to discover that I did not even have anything by Elizabeth Gaskell on my shelves. So all the more reason to give her gothic tales a try. But what I discovered when I opened the book and started the first piece, which is called Disappearances, was that it was a little bit tough to start. And so I'm guessing that um, some of you ran into that difficulty as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about how to get started with this collection because it's well worth reading and especially if you want to participate in this shared read. So I have a few tips to help you get started and keep going with Gothic Tales. So the first piece is called Disappearances and because the collection is called Gothic Tales I reasonably assumed that this was going to be a gothic tale. As I was reading it I started to question whether it was even a tale at all whether it was fiction, whether it was nonfiction. I finally decided, okay, Elizabeth Gaskell is probably doing this kind of metafiction thing where she's fictionalizing something and making it seem like nonfiction. That sort of worked for a while and then kind of broke down because I was seeing things uh, referred to that I knew were true. Um, in particular, a novel or a story, I guess, called Caleb Williams, by William Godwin, who happens to have been Mary Shelley's father. Mary Shelley, of course, was the author of Frankenstein. So I thought, okay, I mean, you could do that in a metafiction, you could bring in real people, but I started to question um, what, whether what I was reading was really nonfiction. And it turns out that this was a piece that Elizabeth Gaskell wrote for the magazine um, Household Words. She was just collecting a bunch of stories that she knew and apparently even, according to my footnotes, got in a little bit of trouble for her loose telling of some of these things that were about real people. And so the real families of some of these people got upset with her and wrote her hate mail and, you know, it's like uh, Twitter for the 19th century. She kind of got harassed for some of the stories that she tells in here. But of course, you have no way of knowing that if you're just reading the piece. So it's, um, it's good to have that little bit of background and understand that she's collecting stories that she's been told. And so going back and reading that again, understanding that, I wouldn't have gotten bogged down in trying to understand what genre I was reading in. And the other thing about understanding that is that you don't have the expectation that each story is going to actually develop. So I thought at first that the first story she was telling me was going to be the story and then at some point she cuts it off and shifts to another story and then I thought, oh, maybe those two are going to merge. So I had a hard time um, understanding the genre that I was reading. I think the best way to approach this first piece is to think of it as a collection of stories that might be told around the campfire, ghost stories essentially. They're not literally ghost stories, but they have that kind of flavor, that gothic flavor to them. The last thing I want to mention that might um, be off-putting is just the first page of this piece. She doesn't really start in the most logical place for capturing your attention. She gives you this convoluted series of relationships that end up being of absolutely no consequence whatsoever. She says, first of all, I remembered with a smile the unexpected manner in which a relation of mine was discovered by an acquaintance who had mislaid or forgotten Mr. B's address. Now, my dear cousin, Mr. B, charming as he is in many points, so now I'm confused. Who's the acquaintance? Who's the cousin? Who's the relation? Who's the person they're telling the story about? And the fact is, 
it doesn't matter. So she she really didn't start in the right place, I, I would argue, for this story. It really gets going on the second page, and all you need to know is that the story is about Mr. B. You don't need to know that it's her cousin. Of course, she's saying that because she's trying to legitimize the story, but again, if what you're really looking for is a gothic tale, um, it doesn't really matter so much. So don't get bogged down in the details on that first page or two of disappearances. Now, you might not be reading the collection in order, but a lot of people tend to start at the beginning, and so I wouldn't want you to be put off by any challenges in this first piece from reading the pieces that follow. The second story, the old nurse's story, is a more, a very traditional gothic tale. It's got all of those elements, a dark and spooky old house that a young governess comes to and starts to, you know, realize there are secrets in the house. There's, there's a storm, multiple storms. There's um, organ music, you know, mysteriously playing in the background. So it's got all these great gothic tale elements to it. It turns out that Elizabeth Gaskell was a really good friend of Charlotte Bronte's, and so you definitely can um, see why they would have gotten along and see flickers of Jane Eyre in here, some of the same kinds of elements that Bronte is using in Jane Eyre, and also that her sister Emily Bronte is using in Wuthering Heights. This also, the second piece, the old nurse's story reminded me of um, The Turn of the Screw as well, another great gothic tale about a spooky old house. If you want to go to America, you could look at Edgar Allan Poe's uh, The Fall of the House of Usher. So, you know, there's all of these um, elements that are feeling really um, classic in this second story. The only other thing I'll say, no spoilers, is that the moral of this story may be more frightening than the story itself. Realizing that, I think, was maybe the most interesting thing about the story to me. I was just kind of looking forward to reading some, you know, some fun gothic tales, and I wasn't expecting to be given some deep kernel of life <laughs> to think about, but I would say that that's what happens at the end of the old nurse's story, at least it did for me. And from there, you're gonna find um, there are some longer pieces, some shorter pieces, but Elizabeth Gaskell is great company for Victober, for October, for the Halloween season coming up. So I wanna encourage you to join in on these Victober reads and have a great time. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this collection. I'm still reading it, and so I'll be really interested to um, have a conversation with you about what you think about Elizabeth Gaskell's Gothic Tales. If you like what you see here, please subscribe, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs.